Here we are in the middle of historic Little Italy to look at a brand new building, the Grand Mulberry. A residential building that fits into its neighborhood by drawing inspiration from the brick architecture around it. Interestingly, it stands out by fitting in. This neighborhood has such an incredible history. It must have been pretty exciting to work here. Yeah, inspiring, challenging, but super exciting. As you know, we work in a lot of historic neighborhoods. We work throughout New York, but every neighborhood has its own specific characteristics. And I think that's what we really try and tap into. When I look at this building, I don't see a modern building necessarily. I don't see a historic building. I see something that's vacillating between the two in a really fascinating way. And at this point, I think you really see it, right? Completely. You see those two organizing principles coming together. The history of the tenement building written in brick and the modernity of this regular rhythm of windows and the fact that they're slightly out of alignment calls more attention to each one, but at the same time contributes to telling the story. I would say that the brick actually came afterwards. We started with the idea of a pixel and using a dot to draw the facade. And then it sort of made perfect sense, like, oh, it was so obvious, but brick was the right material to do that. And so we landed on the double brick, which has a reveal that still mimics two bricks. But this worked out well for the scale, and we could also integrate it with single bricks when it was flat. So all the flat portions of the building are single bricks, takes two to stack to get to the same height. Then we really looked into the pattern, how it all shuffled and laid out on the facade you know, ultimately developing all these special shapes, uh, hand molded shapes. We've worked with Glengarry on a couple of projects, but they were amazing on this project. Um, they had to make a number of special shapes, particularly on the corner where it's curved. Uh, they really embraced the idea from the beginning and were super collaborative. So there's the art of the brick itself, which is like a piece of sculpture. There's the artistry in the drawing of this ghost facade on the facade and then the artistry of executing it in the fields. I mean, that's kind of a beautiful thing. Yeah, and I think that really resonates. That's why you really feel the handmade quality of this building. You know, it starts with the brick and the whole building sort of resonates with that. Not all bricks are made exactly the same way, but you guys really dug into the artistry of the actual brick. We need to find someone who could make the brick, figure out all the components that we needed, and then do the production as well. How is this particular brick made? There are two main different ways you can make bricks. One is extrusion, think Play-Doh going through a form, or molded, which are made by hand. And our project, we did every brick individually by hand. There's 10 unique molds to create the facade of the Grand Mulberry. Each are made from wood. Those are also handcrafted. We really wanted that orange red brick that ties into the neighborhood. Here at the factory at Glengarry, they can produce that by a combination of the clay and the sand. And then when it's fired in the kiln, it creates the final color that you see on the building. There's over 60,000 bricks on this project, each made. 60,000 individually handmade bricks. Yes. So in the end, the facade becomes one giant handmade sculpture. Yeah, absolutely. And one of the things that we tried to do was make it really look monolithic. So we even picked a mortar that was a similar color to the brick. So all you really see is the play of light and shadow on that facade. You can't have a new residential building in New York City anymore without a beautiful rooftop terrace. No, you can't. But I think what's really great about this terrace is that you really get to see the building in the context of downtown Manhattan. You really understand that the building's sort of at the epicenter of downtown. Chinatown, Soho, Little Italy. I mean, it's a smaller residential building, but it actually has a museum in the base. Yeah, actually, the Italian American Museum was on the site Oh, on the site originally. And yeah, and part of the arrangement was that they would come back in a bigger, more glorious space. Nice, nice. At the center of Little Italy. Exactly. Makes total sense. Exactly. Morris, it was great to see your building and hear all the ideas behind it, but truth be told, this is why I came. Absolutely. We're here at DePaulo's, the fifth generation of the family's contribution to the neighborhood. You know, this neighborhood has been evolving for over a hundred years, 
And I was so pleased, so pleased to see how you have uh, taken the building and bringing it into the community. It really represents a part of New York as it was and as it is today. The building is a very characteristic but particularly good Morris building. It is a layer of richness that is integral to the building and its neighborhood. Welcome to the neighborhood. Thank you. Thanks Let for me say. Us. Cheers. 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 Salute. Gracias. If you liked this video, make sure to subscribe to our channel for more every week.